So you've got Root, you've learned the basics, and now you want to win with the Woodland Alliance. This video offers you 16 tips across the early, mid, and late game. Stick around to the end if you want to know how to counter the Woodland Alliance using seven more legendary tactics. In the early part of the game, your main goal is to spread sympathy. This is when you're between 1 and 10 victory points. So the Woodland Alliance is the underground rebellion. They begin as a minor nuisance to the Marquis, but if left unchecked, they'll rapidly become a major headache. They'll never become an overwhelmingly huge military force on the map, but instead, they play to sabotage, disrupt, and to aggravate. So here's our first tip. Right off the hop, in the first birdsong turn, spread sympathy three times. Put these in central high traffic areas where you think the area or marquees are going to move, not where they currently are. You need to place more sympathy in adjacent locations so corners aren't ideal. And being near the Vagabond can be a really great bonus as well. You want to create choke points so that other players need to travel through your area to give you cards. Take a look at each of these clearings. I'll mark each one so that you can tell which ones are more heavily trafficked. The higher numbers mean there's more likelihood that players will travel through this square and thus give you more cards. Remember though that each game is situational and you're going to have minor variations based on where the Marquis and the Airy and the Vagabond are all located. Tip number two. Most people agree that for the first daylight turn, you should mobilize card into your supporter deck, all of them. Unless, of course, you can craft something really, really good, but that would generally be the exception. Third tip is on the second turn, the revolution, you need to get a base up fast. When you have no bases, you can only have five supporters in your deck. So the base allows you an unlimited number of supporters. Then, you should get your second base up right away. This makes it really hard to take the Woodland Alliance down, especially if they have two adjacent bases that can help defend and reinforce each other. Tip number four. Three officers seems to be the magic number in the early game. You want to get to that number quick. You don't want to overcommit though, because then you can't build as many warriors. Tip number five. Card draw is your friend. Cards are more valuable to you than to all the other factions. Craft the better burrow bank to get more cards, or stand and deliver. Both are excellent options. Tip number six. Your faction uses guerrilla war tactics, so you should be disrupting opponents, and you should be trying to make them attack you, and then you can ambush them. It's also a lot of fun to do that, so just seeing your friends explode when, when you switch the dice on them and get that defensive bonus is a lot of fun. So when they move to your square, they give you a card, they also position themselves so that you can then attack them if you want and dislodge their presence there and you don't even have to spend a movement action to get there. So you profit from any aggression against you by another player. Tip number seven. Try to have three cards that match the suit you need in your supporter deck. Then you can place a sympathy token and revolt in the same turn. Let's turn our attention now to the mid game. This is when you're between say 11 and 20 points. You've got your engine up and running and now you need to dig in and don't stretch yourself too thin. Tip number eight, craft cards. You become almost invincible if you get the armorer's card and that lets you ignore all rolled hits taken. So you can actually save that, that card until you really need it and I mean, most players are going to really hesitate to attack you when you have the defensive bonus and the armorer's card. Throw in an ambush in there and no one's knocking you out of there. You get one free movement too from, from one particular card each night and that is like having an extra officer. So craft that card as well. You also want to try to lure the Vagabond in with crafting because for you, card economy is key and you also want to keep that synergy going with the Vagabond. Tip number nine, defend your bases. This might be the most important tip. Losing half of your officers can be catastrophic. Remember, you're not an offensive faction. You creep in the shadows. You wait to spring on unsuspecting armies who think they can knock your sympathy out of play. So you need to defend those bases because you can't afford the setbacks of having to rebuild all of that infrastructure. Tip number 10, move, organize to spread sympathy, and recruit back at your base for defense. This is a fantastic strategy so that you can spread expensive sympathy using the organize action. This 
in the mid game is probably one of your best ways to really spread your influence around the board. It gives you a lot of freedom and control, and it doesn't cost you a lot to get it done, especially if at this stage you're starting to get more officers. Tip number 11. Don't build three bases. Never leave your bases undefended, and always have at least two units there. If you lose a base, you lose card draw, and you lose officers, it seems to make sense. Even having three units, it's a huge commitment, but you could have between two and three units to keep those bases safe. Depends how risky you want to play it. Let's move now to the late game. This is where you've hit 21 points, Suddenly, everybody's starting to notice what you're doing. It's the final push where the board might begin to unite against you and jointly try to stop you. This can actually be a very precarious stage in the game for you because you may have slipped under the radar until now, but if you've hit 21 to 30 points, you now have lots of sympathy, you've scored lots of points, you've probably angered some people in, at the table, and you need to play this part of the game in the negotiation phase to really vault yourself to that final goal. So tip number 12, by the end game, you likely want to have either four or maybe even five officers. Because with three officers, you don't have enough options, but any more than five, and that limits your available warriors. So you'll have tons of moves, but you won't actually have anywhere to go or anything to do with them. So um, probably four to five is ideal at this stage. Tip number 13, craft cards for a little push to get you through to the win. So if you find yourself just two or three points low, remember you're a card crafting faction. It's easy for you to do this. So sneak in those extra points here and there uh, to try to boost yourself. Tip number 14, don't let the other players notice how far ahead you're getting with your victory points and how effective your infrastructure is. If they see cards whipping out of their hands and flying into yours at every turn and they decide to all gang up, they can absolutely destroy you. I'll get to that in a moment when we go to the how to counter the woodland alliance, but be sure not to anger the players on the board. That can be a death sentence. Tip number 15. You should probably avoid dominance victories because you have fewer warriors than all the other factions, so you're not really in a great place to win this way. Just keep spreading your sympathy. That's your ticket to glory. Tip number 16. This is the final tip for the Woodland Alliance. You should only revolt for a third base if it's going to get you the win on that turn. Otherwise, the third base makes it much more difficult for you to defend your holdings, and you're much more likely to lose the officers you've already built. So those are all the major tips for you to improve your game as the Woodland Alliance. However, you have to be absolutely aware about how to counter the Woodland Alliance because other players will probably know these tips and you need to think about these so you can counter the counter. All right, so tip number one for countering the Woodland. The Vagabond ignores the movement rule for sympathy, and your sympathy tokens give two points after you turn hostile, so um, the Vagabond can exploit that rule. Another possible counter, number two, is to put a ton of warriors on their bases, on the Woodland Alliance's bases, which prevents them from actually moving those warriors away, because if you've got three, four, five uh, Marquis to Cat warriors sitting there, He's not going to leave his or she will not leave their base undefended. It's just too risky. So that actually locks them down quite a bit. And uh, it's well worth the investment, especially when you as the Marquis or the Irie have uh, so many troops that you can place there. Tip number three to counter the woodland. Kill their bases. Kneecap them. If you can get to a base, and I know the losses can be sometimes heavy, but think about it in terms of how much is the Woodland Alliance losing versus how much are you losing. And it may be frustrating to lose on those defensive rolls and the guerrilla tactics, but if you can chisel them down and knock out those bases, it actually takes them quite a bit to rebuild all that infrastructure. So get those bases, especially if you see a vulnerable base, get there and take advantage. Um, also, if you take out all their bases, you can they'll have a limited supporter deck size of five, so you can really damage them quite heavily. Tip number four to counter the woodland. 
The Woodland Alliance is really slow out of the gates. I mean, they, they just silently creep into the outskirts, well, or generally the, the central part of the forest, but thematically we'll say the outskirts or the fringes of the clearings. And it's your job to not let them get a foothold. Early in the game, you won't think they're much of a threat, but once they get established, they really dig in hard. So though their units um, also seem very strong, they remember they have very few units to go around. So you can keep them in check and you can prevent them from spreading. The Woodland Alliance, for tip number five to beat them, is good against the Marquise, who has limited actions, and the Vagabond, who has limited board presence. And so this leaves the Airy, who can't beat them alone. So the key is for the other players to unite, and sometimes that has to happen at the table through negotiation, through discussion, even through cajoling and, and pointing out how OP the Woodland Alliance player is. And this is a completely valid strategy to try and direct attention at the Woodland Alliance player to point out how fast they're growing, how hard they're gonna be to stop, and every time they steal a card from you, make sure to make a big production about that so other players notice, and point out how big their supporter deck is and how they're preparing to make that giant play at the end to try to score the win. The sixth way to counter the Woodland Alliance, if you have three or more warriors, and this is a rule that a lot of people forget about, but if you have three or more warriors in a clearing, then the Woodland Alliance can't spread sympathy very easily to that clearing. They just don't have enough warriors to have dominance in that zone. So try to choke off the next exit point that you see the Woodland Alliance player working towards because you can prevent them from moving their warriors to those unsympathetic clearings with these three warrior walls. That's especially on the shoulders of the Marquis de Cat who has the, the power to do that. The seventh and final way to counter the Woodland Alliance. If that player has a lot of officers and few supporters, then you might actually want to leave some of their sympathy in place because clearing the sympathy will just let them replace it with all of those officer actions, which actually ends up scoring them more points. But if they have fewer officers and a lot of supporters, then that's the time when you really want to take that, those sympathy tokens out. So. Whether you're trying to dominate with the Woodland Alliance, or if you're trying to find a way to take them down, these are some of the tips and tricks you should consider using. If this video was useful to you in your quest to improve at this game, please consider giving this video a like so that others hear about it, and also join the Legendary Tactics Alliance by subscribing. We'd love to see you back.